Previously, we started working with some sectioning elements that were introduced as part of HTML5, starting with the header and footer, and then moving into the main tag that holds the main body of our content, which we can then subdivide using sections and self-contained articles. Now, I wanna point out something that can be a source of confusion here, especially with sections and articles, is that many times, the way you divide up your web page using these sectioning tags, and especially when it comes to the difference between section and article, is largely based on your intent as a designer, developer, or author of the article. Just because in this example, I have an article inside of a section doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have subsections inside of articles. For example, with a longer book or a really long article, you may wanna actually divide up the entire article into subsections. The main point is that an article is meant to be a self-contained piece of information. And then sections are meant to be logical dividers on your page or even inside an article. And I wanna say that because for your own websites, don't just copy this template and implement it. Really think about what you want to accomplish and how it should be divided so that a web crawler or somebody on assistive technologies like screen readers can understand the information better. And lastly, we also discussed the aside tag for things like newsletter subscriptions and other things that are not necessarily part of the core content of your page, but are still important to include. So now let's add some content to our articles here. I've drafted some content we can include, and I wanna include this in a special way using a cutting edge tag that still doesn't have full support across all browsers yet, but will very soon. And this is the details tag. So instead of a paragraph, I'm going to store this post about an apple a day keeps the dentist away inside of a details tag. So let's create a details tag. It's similar to a spoiler tag that you might've seen where the main content that actually shows up is maybe a title or a headline or something like that. And then you can expand to view more details. And in order to change the heading of this tag from details to something else, like an apple a day keeps the dentist away, we can create a summary tag that will store the heading. Now we have an apple a day keeps the dentist away. And just as an FYI, if we wanted to keep it open by default, we can add an open tag. Notice that that shifted the arrow downwards instead of what used to be sideways. So again, now we can add some more details that I've drafted up here, copy this, and then paste inside the details. And again, if I wanna add an open tag, it'll open it by default. So it turns out an apple has natural teeth cleaning properties that keep your teeth whiter, the fibrous parts act as a natural floss, and it doesn't cause any bleeding. You should naturally still brush your teeth twice a day and a floss, but apples give you that teeth cleaning boost. So this open tag opens a details tag by default. If it's closed by default, users can click on this and it'll open up the details. To highlight the title and emphasize that a little bit more, we can also add special highlighting by using the tag mark so that it draws extra attention towards the title of the post that will cause users to click on it. Since I'm limiting our use to HTML, this doesn't exactly look the nicest just yet, but mark is another way to add special attention to some text. Okay, let's go to our next post and replicate it using similar tags. So the next post is going to be inside the second article tag. And again, we can use the details tag to store it and provide a summary element that will store the title inside of a mark tag for special highlighting. Can't you see how rich orange is in vitamins? Underneath the summary, outside the summary tag, we can actually add the text of the post. So here we go. Uh, here comes the text of the post. If we wanted the orange post to be open by default, again, we can add the open attribute to the details tag, or users can just go over here, open it up, and say in the medieval era, pirates and sailors are traveling the ocean for long stretches, but often get scurvy because of lack of vitamin C. Oranges are packed in this vitamin that help you prevent the common cold or other illnesses. So one of the reasons I wanted to use the details tag instead of just posting underneath is that good user experience design tries to keep the important content 
above the fold, meaning we don't want our users to necessarily have to scroll all the way down to see all of the page content. We'll get more into good user experience design further in the course, but just wanted to let you know that that's one of the reasons you may want to use this details. Even though it's not quite supported across all browsers, the details tag is still not supported in Internet Explorer or Edge. It is supported in the latest versions of Firefox, Safari, and Chrome, but Internet Explorer and Edge are, are not quite there yet. You'll run into that quite a bit where some, some features that you want to implement, especially if you get into JavaScript, you, you'll get into situations where certain features that you want to implement are not quite fully implemented in Internet Explorer. Okay, finally, let's move on to our third post and add a title, Blueberries the Real Superfood, uh, as a details tag. And inside the details, we have a summary that has our title. And remember to mark the summary with a special highlight to draw attention. And then underneath the summary, let's add our body text. Full of antioxidants, if there was a fruit that really kept the doctor away, it would be blueberries. They have a wide variety of vitamins in them, along with other nutrients essential for keeping your body functioning well. Add these to yogurt or a bowl of cereal to mix in some delicious flavor into your breakfast. And since we're on the topic of HTML5 tags and properties, I want to introduce one additional attribute you may run into that can be really helpful in case you want to implement it, and that is the content editable attribute. You can add this to any tag, it's a global attribute that was introduced in HTML5, and once you add it to a particular tag, it makes that element editable. So suppose you wanted to try a different body text to our newsletter, Call to Action. You can say, uh, sign up to receive updates. Notice that once the page is refreshed, it reverts back to the default text, subscribe to our newsletter. So this is not permanent unless you add and an event handler, another global event handler, like on change, and then you tied that to some other functionality that actually made that more permanent. So by default, it won't really do anything, but in case you wanted to work with your marketing department or something like that, you can add the content editable attribute to allow others to edit your web page. So that's a fairly complete overview of the new sectioning tags and formatting tags that are introduced with HTML5. This topic is still not fully clear to a lot of web designers and developers. So if you have any questions about these, just go ahead and post in the comments. Really, if you just have any questions about any of these uh, topics that we've covered, post in the comments on the respective video so that other students can also have their questions answered that way.